what to do if you are at full capacity. The easiest thing that you can be doing ways to generate more money in less time. The first thing that I would actually recommend, there's four different categories when we look at scaling, incredible changes happening in our business mentorship. The reason that I'm so comfortable and confident with it now is because we created business and that actually gets us so many more leads. We've had some clients recently who have started semi-private sessions. There are other clients out of their own online course, went from literally nothing and then got 20 people enrolled in her first intake. She went off and live in Bali and work remotely. Finding a way to scale what you do so that you're not just doing one-on-ones all the time forever, over and over and over on the hamster wheel. Welcome to Swift Coaches Academy, a podcast dedicated to bringing health and wellness professionals the uncensored truth behind what it really takes to succeed in the health industry with me, your host, Zania Wood. As an accredited exercise physiologist and business owner for almost a decade, I'm on a mission to transform the lives of ambitious health professionals like you who want more and are ready to take action to create incredible impact in your careers and unlock financial freedom in your business. So join me as I speak candidly with industry leaders about the struggles and successes from within the trenches through thought-provoking conversations. Welcome back. We are actually doing part two today of the one thing you need to do in your business, regardless of what level you are at. So if you didn't listen to last week's episode, we talked about what to do if you are not yet at full capacity, focusing on leads and how to generate those. So um, we dove into the three things and the three ways to get leads in your business and also what not to focus on because of the fact that overwhelm is a whole list of things you think you could be doing and not clarity on what you should be doing. So I provide you a ton of clarity in what you should be doing if you are not at full capacity yet. Today, however, I'm going to be talking to what to do if you are at full capacity. So if this is you or if you're thinking like, hey, what are my next steps and I want to know what happens when I get to full capacity, then this episode is for you. So We are going to be talking about the first thing that you want to do when you're at full capacity is have a look at your ability to offload, right? Because if you are at capacity with your client numbers, you need to basically get some of your time back. So regardless of of how we're going to scale, you need a little bit of time back to be able to do that. Or you need to determine if you are actually like just at full capacity or if you're willing for a period of time to push above full capacity to then come back down. Now, the reason for this is because of the fact that you are going to to offload some things, you may need to be investing some money. And we want to make sure that you are giving yourself um, a financial buffer. So if you are um, at full capacity, also Another thing that I'd probably suggest before doing all of this is increase your prices. If you don't have spots left in your most of your schedule and you are trying to fit people in left, right and center and you're really, really struggling with it, the easiest thing that you can be doing and probably the first thing that I would actually recommend is increase your prices. So do a $10 price rise with all of your clients. Obviously give them the notice that is required and let them know that, you know, if they decide that they don't want to move forward with that price rise, that's totally okay. And potentially you have some other options for them, right? Like you could have options of, um, you know, a semi-private model where they can actually decrease how much they're paying per week, but you can put them into like less than a a one-on-one scenario. Um, If you're in the online space, you can do something similar in terms of maybe you have like, or maybe you have a programming option, right? So they don't even have to go from, they can go from face-to-face down to a level of programming, which may be slightly cheaper if they're working with you um, in a one-on-one capacity. But finding some sort of group um, way or scalable way that you can continue to service your people is going to be really, really important if you are looking to scale and you're like, cool, I've made full capacity and I'm doing pretty well, but what's next? Like, I want more. And those are the people that I love working with because those people who are Um, tenacious, who are, you know, driven, who want more and want to create more and want to help more people. 
those are my people. So let's say that you've done that. You have increased your prices and you are still at full capacity because no one left because you're an incredible coach. Um, or even a couple of people did leave. And let's say that's given you a couple of those hours back and you're now ready to take the steps in terms of creating some sort of scalable product. Um, first thing I think is really, really important and I get all of my uh, scale mentees to look at is what can they there's four different categories, right? In terms of when we look at scaling, what we can do. So um, before scaling to make sure we get some time back. So the acronym for this is R-A-S-D. Okay. So the first thing that we can do, the R is remove. Like what are you doing in your week that you just don't need to be doing, that you can just literally remove, stop doing it. It's not important. Like checking your promotions folder on your email inbox. It's like not important, right? Like, and maybe you go through all of these and I don't know, maybe there's things in your life, but also this could be personally, right? Like if you are at full capacity with clients and you charge for, to make it easy, $100 an hour, but you actually go and like do your own groceries at the grocery store and that costs you one hour of your time, like you can get them delivered for like $5, $10, right? And then you can see another client in that hour. What you can also do is free up some of your emotional energy because the energy cost of you being like, what do I need to get from the shops? Or I have to plan when I'm doing this can also cost you and sometimes even more than the actual dollars, right? So other things that you could be looking at is going like, you know, what else can I remove, right? Can I hire someone to be a, like my house cleaner? Because that takes me three hours every fortnight to clean the house. And it's going to cost me 150 bucks, let's say 50 bucks an hour. Um, I only need 1.5 clients to get that money back. And that's only an hour and a half of my time. So I've just doubled the amount that I can earn because I've leveraged my time in that period. So super, super important. Focus on firstly, increasing those prices. If you're at full capacity, that means you're good. That means most people are probably going to stay. That means that you need to increase your prices because if you're still charging 50 bucks, like the low, like the lowest PT rate that I see and still see, unfortunately, sometimes if you're charging that little, there's also an affinity to that with how good you are. And if you are at full capacity, you are good enough to increase your prices. Even if you're not at full capacity, you are still good enough to increase your prices, everyone, right now. The people who are listening to a podcast like this in your spare time, you are not the people who are doing the bare minimum, right? Like you are someone who is already going above and beyond. And I know that because you're here. So you absolutely deserve to be charging more and it's going to attract a clientele of a greater caliber as well. So these people, when we invest our money, that's also a sign of the value exchange, right? If you imagine there were two coaches, let's say coach A charged $50 an hour and coach B charges $150 an hour. You know nothing about these coaches. You see them on like a, you just see coach A or coach B on like a website or something and you have to pick which one you want. And let's say that like you really, really, really want to achieve your goal. You don't want to fuck around. You want to make sure that you get great results. You want someone with experience. Who are you instinctively going to choose? you're probably going to choose coach B. And the reason for that is because the value, we see $150 versus 50, we automatically compare and we therefore believe without knowing anything, we believe that coach B is a better coach, probably has more experience and a whole host of um, great results. Whereas coach A, we probably go, mm, maybe they're a junior, maybe they're just starting out. I'm not sure about how their results will be. I'm probably going to waste a bit more time with them. And the more... Um, urgency or um, the greater that we want our goal to be achieved, the more likely we are to invest more time, effort and money into doing that. So um, let's make sure that we are increasing our prices first and foremost and attracting a really strong caliber of client, but also showing ourselves that we are worth it, right? Um, because if you 
I think it's a big thing. When when I get any of our men, business mentees to increase their prices, their confidence improves. Like they they show up differently. They you know they stand taller. They speak more confidently. They actually sell more people once they've had a couple of runs on the board and they've talked to people about the new price because they're like, yeah, I am worth this. And people have actually said yes. I think that's the difference. In theory, you can be like, increase your price. That sounds great. But in practice, it can be really scary and it can be really hard to say to people who particularly kind of like become your friends, right? Your clients who become your friends to say, hey, um, I actually need to charge more for this now. And these are the reasons why. And once those yeses start coming through and you start to get reps on the board, it becomes this snowballing effect. So making sure if you're at full capacity or close to full capacity or just haven't increased your prices in a while, you are doing that. Then we're going to talk about uh, the RASD. We got to the R, which was remove. So what can you remove that you just don't need to be doing anymore? That's, you know, you're doing a five-step process. It could be a three-step process. Let's figure that out. Second thing is to automate. So what can you automate in your business so that it happens instantaneously or without you knowing, i.e. Um, our lead to client pipeline in our business is pretty well automated. So what I mean by that is if you apply on the website and you uh, basically you click a button, you click apply, it says put in your contact details. So you do that, you go next, and then it says fill out this form. And then you fill out the form and then it goes next. And then it says, book your appointment. And then you book your appointment, it says next. And then you rock up to your appointment. If someone doesn't follow all those steps, let's say they just fill in the application form and they just fill in their contact details. We have automated emails and SMS reminders saying like, hey, you missed step two of the process or we're still waiting to hear from you with your application or is something holding you back? And so this has been something that we have set up once and now happens forever until we decide to tweak it, change it, remove it in the business. And that actually gets us so many more leads into the business who start at the lead section, but then move all the way through to becoming a client. And the likelihood of them moving through that is automated and it increases the chances that we are going to pick people up along the way. Because what I see most coaches have is they have like, hey, let me send you a text. And then like, or like, they'll be like, what time works for you? And then they text them back and they say, four o'clock on Thursday. And then they go, that doesn't work. And then they go, what about five o'clock? And it's just this fucking nightmare. And yes, it might take you five, 10 minutes throughout your day to organize that. But you, we need to strike while the iron is hot. And if you are scaling, you don't have these little moments anymore. Like those are precious and they are sapping from your energy. They're distracting you. And we want to strike while the iron's hot. And if we can have that automated that is incredible for us and a great boss move when we are scaling. From there, so we've removed, we've automated, then we want to systemize. So some things can't be automated, unfortunately, right? Like I still have initial consults with all of our clients. We can't automate uh, the testing because we don't know what their test results are gonna be. So we can't send them out some automated pre-templated email after their testing being like, you did really well with hamstring flexibility because they could have sucked. Um, and so it does need to have some sort of human touch. And sometimes we don't wanna automate everything in our business to feel like someone's talking just to a computer. We want to have those human connection and those touch points, which I think are really important. So systemizing some things can be really great. For example, let's say I wanted to interrupt this episode just to check in. I know that being a health professional and a business owner is tough. There are so many plates that you're spinning and juggling and I get it because I absolutely am there, was there, still working on it. And we have created an incredible business mentorship to support people through this process. Now, if you're feeling like you're alone, you're struggling, you just don't know what to do or which actions to take because there's so many different options that we could be doing, but what's going to be right for you and the business that you want to create to help create freedom financially and also create more impact with your clients then I strongly encourage you to reach out. Our business mentorship program is honestly something that I'm so proud to have created. And the results that we get in this program are second to none. I have so much love for the people in this program. And what I love about them most is that they are action takers. And despite the risks, despite the fears around the risks that they need to take, because we know that risk taking is a part of business, they are action takers and they are really ready to 
skyrocket their business. If this sounds like you, you want to be around people like this. We know our environment is such an important factor in creating the life that we want and the business that we want, then you absolutely should jump on the show note link and have a look at what's included and then jump on a call with me and we can chat through if this is right for you. And this is absolutely not right for everyone and that's totally okay, but I don't want you to pass up this opportunity because we start Feb 5th, but we are probably going to close applications sooner than that when we hit our capacity. So there are only a couple spots available left. Uh, If this is you, something you're considering, please do that now. Pause this episode, come back to it later because your business and your life that you deserve and you want to live is waiting for you on the other side of that link. I cannot wait to uh, chat to you soon. And now back to the episode a client on boards with you, you probably need to get them to sign an agreement. You probably need to uh, get their payment details. You need to set them up in an app for programming or training or whatever your, maybe it's nutrition, like whatever it is, you need to give them access to some sort of content or program or, or something that they will follow. And maybe a couple more things like how do, you, do they contact you and um, you know what do they do if something goes wrong? There might just be a couple things you want to let them know at the start of their training block, that should be a pre-templated email, right? Anything that can be automated, obviously automate that first, but some things like the testing, we might want to give specifics on what their specific outcomes were or what we're focusing on with them or their goals, how they're getting there, all that sort of stuff. We want to systemize that. Last one. So we've got RAS, remove, automate, systemize. Last one is delegate. Now this one is one that I literally tore my hair out for like three years trying to figure out. And when I finally, it finally clicked for me, it was like an aha moment. And I was like, thank fuck, Um, which is delegating to someone else. So typically I've said this before, I don't think your first hire should be another version of you. So I don't think it should be, if you're a coach, I don't think it should be necessarily another coach. The first person in your business, in my business that I hired was a virtual assistant. And the reason for that is because typically as coaches, we love coaching but we hate the admin backend side of things. So if you are still doing that, let's say you are still checking that all the money comes into the account. You are still reconciling that against um, all the all of the, the payments. You are still going into your accounting software like Xero and you are still reconciling all of the payments. You personally are doing this or you are the one doing appointment reschedules, right? Can you, ideally appointment reschedules should be automated. Um, they should have a link. But um, could you delegate some of these things, right? Maybe every six weeks you need to send them their specific retesting report and that needs to be a specific, um, have specific data in that. But could you delegate that? Let's say you write your treatment notes and it's all written down. And then from that, someone else takes that data and implements it into an email with like a pre-templated Um, like their name and something about them and then their test results and then it tells them what they're working on. Can you delegate that? Can you delegate anything in your business, right? Because if you are, again, charging, let's say, even $60 an hour, which is very, very, very low and I wouldn't recommend, but let's say you were, right? Virtual assistants are going to be like a third of that or less, for you to get someone to do these tasks on your behalf. And that means that you only need to do, if you do one additional client, it saves you, that's three hours of someone else's time that can be doing those tasks. Now, I am not going to lie and say that it's a breeze and it's so easy to delegate. And it's just like this simple thing of like, tell them once and then it's perfect. It is a lot harder than that. And I, like I said, spent three years pulling my hair out with this stuff. Um, But the reason that I'm so comfortable and confident with it now is because we created systems. We have them in place and we actually have a service called Swift Assist where we run you through and take you through and coach you on how to delegate, how to do these things. Because when I first started delegating in 2019, I had no idea. And I was like sending all these WhatsApp messages and then being like, why didn't you do the thing I asked four days ago? And they were like, I couldn't see it. It was so far back in the WhatsApp messages and I got confused. And I was just like, this should be simpler. Um, So we created this uh, specific document that we actually give to all of our, um, anyone who wants to work with us with Swift Assist. And we basically teach not only you as the business owner, but we teach and upskill the virtual assistants to work harmoniously together so that you get the most out of your virtual assistant. Because honestly, 
most of them out there are pretty crap. And we have found, and we do recruitment and hiring and all these things. And we have found the 1% of the 1% and they are incredible at what they do. And we continue to upskill them and we continue to help teach them like English is their second language, right? These, these guys that we have are from the Philippines and they're incredible at doing their job, but the communication and there's language barriers, sorry, there's not language barriers. Their English is actually exceptional. There are cultural challenges that sometimes we find in, and we need to teach the business owner and the virtual assistant how to best communicate in a way that's going to serve that business owner specifically for what they need. So just recapping, we want to remove, automate, systemize and delegate in that order. I think that that is the most important thing. If you're going, okay, well, I'm just sitting here being like, I don't know what I can do. We actually have a, a document that we use with our business mentees where we run you through like you set up what you do in a week and how long it takes you i.e client programming takes you four hours every single week and you could actually systemize that right and what i mean is you could write down the program but you don't have to be the one who uploads it and inputs it into the app which takes so fucking long and is not worth our time when you've got a system and it's the same thing and you're just sitting there like click 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 drag click move like someone else should be doing that particularly because you should be earning far much more than like 20 30 dollars an hour okay next thing that you can do if you are at full capacity is find new ways to generate more money in less time i think that this is so this is sequential right do the rasd first remove automate systemize delegate then find new ways to generate more money in less time. So this could be creating some sort of scalable product or service in some way, right? Obviously increasing your prices is going to generate more money in, in the same amount of time, um, but ideally in less time as well. So let's say like we've had some clients recently who have started semi private sessions. And so they're earning more per hour for the same amount of time that they're doing, right? There are other clients of ours who basically started their own online course, went from literally nothing, didn't have one, and then got like 20 people enrolled in her first intake. She went off and went and like paid for herself and her partner to like live in Bali and work remotely, like incredible, incredible changes happening in our business mentorship. But finding a way to scale what you do, create some sort of portal, platform, education, um, have some way that your business is scalable so that you're not just doing one-on-ones all the time forever over and over and over on the hamster wheel. Alrighty, hopefully that one is ingrained into your head. We need to find a way to generate more money in less time, whether that's a product or a service, have a think. If you're going to go in the online space, obviously you want to be hyper niche. I've had a guy who's come to me recently and he's working on improving um, like jump height for basketball. I was like, that sounds phenomenal, like really specific, hyper specific. And he is like not too tall and he can dunk a basketball, right? So there's proof in the pudding. Like he is a great example of that. And he obviously has done it and is now going to show other people how to do that. So no matter where you're at in business, if you are already ready to scale, and you're going to start implementing some of these ideas or if you are still growing some of these things can be looked at i probably would make sure that you're getting lots of great results in a smaller touch point capacity rather than starting and trying to scale immediately because you want to get some great results and i find that doing that having at least a component of one-on-one -on -one is going to be probably the best way forward if you are starting out. But if you're already close to or at full capacity, then finding a way to scale what you are already doing is going to be incredible for you. You can add maybe even a subscription model into your business if you're doing, let's say, session by session. Again, none of our clients do this. We um, move them where we can if they're not on some sort of um, like Medicare and EIS scheme. We move them into a subscription-based model, but you could add something like that on there. Like a, you could add an education platform. They could pay a certain um, retainer a month to have access to that. And you could do something of that nature. Um, but no matter where you're at in business, I have created a seven keys to add a hundred K in your business, which is a live and free masterclass. Now, what uh, I guess gives me the right to say you can add hundred K to your business is that I've done it over and over again. We had someone the other day who literally said, he's been working with me for like just under two years now. And he said to me the other day, he was like, I just made $90,000 in the last six months. And literally 18 months ago, he was considering taking a job 
for like 80K a year. So he's made more than that in six months. And he was considering at that time when he started working with me, he was earning probably about 60K a year. And he was considering taking this job for 80. And he was like, oh, I don't know. I just think I can do it myself. He started working with me. We went through it. I said, absolutely do not freaking take that job. What are you doing? Um, And now he's going to be looking to close to um, multi six figures Uh, this year with his projections, which is really, really fucking cool. We've also had another business mentee who made, uh, went from like literally zero to $100,000 in her first 10 months as a business owner, which is fucking incredible. And it's actually not that hard. Like if you do the math on this, 100,000 divided by let's do 48, because uh, let's say, you know, you need four weeks holiday a year, you're human, you want to take some time off, that is a-okay. You divide that by, let's say, 25, so that would be 25 clients. You only need to be charging $84 per session and doing 25 sessions a week to get $100,000 in the next 12 months. That's it. It's really, really not that hard. Let's say that you had 30 clients, though. You could charge $70 per per session and make $100,000 this year or Let's say that you made some sort of scalable product and you had something on top of what you're doing and everyone you add, like you could even do the math on what you're doing right now, right? Like let's say you have 10 clients and you charge $70 per client. So you get $700 in a week, you times that by 48, you're currently at like $33,600. Let's say that you just added 10 clients and ten dollars to your service this year so instead of 10 clients we're going to go with 20 instead of 70 dollars we're going to go with 80 you times that by 48 you're at now seventy six thousand eight hundred dollars i know that those numbers without visualizing them can be a little hard to visualize or see but this shit happens quickly is my point and this doesn't need to be this long slow drawn out process if you have the right systems in place if you know what you're doing and if you are working with someone who can can help you get there, who has been there and done that, which is why if you have not registered or heard yet about our seven keys uh, to add 100K to your business in our live and free masterclass, it is coming up on Jan 31st and you need to register. There will be a link in the show notes for this. I'm going to take you through everything that is inside our business mentorship. I know that's a wild claim. It's two and a half hours. It's We're really going to jam pack this and I'm going to run through exactly what's inside, but actually give you a taste, right? So this is going to be your chance to, to feel inside the mentorship, see what it's about, see everything that's included, and also walk away with mindset shifts that are going to set you up for success, as well as like a clear direction with your lead generation, how to sell, how to, how to sell, sorry, how to nail an offer, like how to streamline and systemize your business. There is so much in here. And I, to be honest, can't believe that we're giving this away for free, but I think that this is so valuable and something that I would have fucking loved to have if this was me back in the day before I started. And I was just like flailing and drowning in like all the things I could be doing and not knowing what I should be doing and being misguided. I had some mentors who were not directing me in the right place, right? I said in last week's episode that I was getting 10 initials every single week, week on week on week. And it shouldn't take you that long to get 10 initials every week to have a full client list if you're converting them all, which I was, but they were slipping through the bucket and no one actually pointed to my attention that like the issue was retention and stopping the leaky bucket. And so when you have that clarity and you have someone who can like, kind of like push you. It's like bumper bars in the bowling alley, right? If they can push you back in the right direction so that you always are heading straight forward and the focus is your focus and you're not getting distracted by the shiny object syndrome that is so common and you are actually just focusing on the one thing that's important for you to move forward, it's fucking game changing. (laughs) <laughs> Look, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it there. If that uh, doesn't convince you that you need to register for this, then I don't know what will. The only other thing that you should probably know is that the first 100 people who register for this event are actually getting three bonuses for free as well. So um, register for that ASAP because it's only the first 100 people who get that. Um, and until next week, move swiftly.
Coach, just a reminder, this may be your last opportunity to work with me for 2024 in our business mentorship program. We start Feb 5th, but if we close doors early, that's because we've sold out in all the spots that we have, which is not a lot. So if you're considering this, I would encourage you to jump in the show notes now, click that link, and I will see you on the other side. I have a tiny favor to ask of you, and that is to just hit that subscribe button if you have not done it yet. If you've made it this far, then I hope that this has been valuable for you and for us to get more incredible guests in front of your earlobes and faces if you're watching us on YouTube, then please do that now. And if you have any feedback or suggestions for me or something that was a golden nugget that really stood out to you in this episode, I would absolutely love if you flicked me a message over on Instagram at Xenia Wood Official. Until next episode and in whatever you do, move swiftly.